Last year, we took a look at Nintendo's colossal cardboard creation, the Labo. Now, Nintendo have taken it one step further and introduced the world of cardboard to the world of virtual reality. Nintendo obviously aren't the first gaming company to get into VR technology, but they are the first to make it suitable for gamers six years and up. Plus, it's way more affordable than other VR options out there. Yeah, all you need to get started is the Switch and the kit. Similar to the original Labo, you can buy the full VR kit that comes with all five attachments plus the goggles, or you can buy a starter kit, which is made up of just the goggles and the blaster attachment. And then you can buy the other attachments separately, depending on what you like the look of. Put together, Labo VR looks similar to a pair of mobile VR goggles, with you attaching the Toy-Cons over the front while you hold the device in place over your eyes. My personal favourite was this funky-looking bird Toy-Con. Oh, what about you guys? I'm gonna have to go with the elephant with super creepy eyes. How about you, Jack? Wait, let me guess. Space Gun. I'm so predictable. <laughs> as cute as they both are, I gotta go with the Blaster. It also has my favourite game of the whole collection, too. Blaster is an on-rail shooter where you have to take out as many of these pink, squishy invaders as you can. There's not a lot to it, but the short time frame you're given to work with and the variety in the level design kept me on my toes. Not to mention the blaster feels so awesome to use, if a bit tiring on the arms, but still a great payoff, especially considering this was the bill that took me the longest to make. Oh yeah, it is definitely the most elaborate creation in the Labo VR arsenal. So it is kind of a shame that it only has one game that uses it to its full advantage. The second game, Kablaster, sees you and a friend passing the blaster back and forth, trying to lure as many hippos to your side of the pond by shooting fruit into their giant mouths. Hungry, hungry hippos, but in virtual reality. One thing both minigames have in common, though, is they highlight the issues in the graphics department. The VR mode is a big step down visually from what we're used to on the Switch. It's not a massive problem, but the blurriness and pixelation, especially around objects at a distance, can be disorienting. And it's something all Labo VR games share, it's just more noticeable in the blaster because you're making lots of fast movements. On the flip side, the games using the elephant Toy-Con are much more methodical and precise. The main mode, called Doodle, is a 3D painting studio that lets you draw, decorate, and manipulate your own masterpieces. While I'm no Van Gogh, I had a really fun time getting into the creative spirit in a way that didn't involve folding cardboard for ages. The second game is Marble Drop, and it's all about getting a ball through hoops by moving misaligned objects to create a path. It's very simple, though, with obvious solutions and thus not much challenge. And honestly, I got bored of it after just a few levels. You know what's not boring, though? Flying. Specifically flying on a swan-robot hybrid. In the aptly named bird mode, you can take to the skies collecting apples, bees, fish, and other oddities for the hatching chicks around the island. Gripping the handles to flap your wings, leaning to turn, and forwards to swoop down into a dive. You can also use the wind pedal add-on, which, when stepped on, sends a gust of wind right into your face for that extra level of immersion. Minus the bugs in your teeth. Oh, don't worry, they saved that feature for the bird dash. Where you and your cyborg companion have to race through hoops at top speeds. If you're prone to motion sickness, this is the one that might trigger it. Some of the other games are Hop Dodge, in which you use the wind pedal to propel a frog into the air to dodge and climb projectiles. Ocean Camera uses the camera toy con to let you take pictures of various sea creatures to add to your collection. And House Camera takes you inside the living space of Fluffball, the critter from the original Labo House build. These were the weakest of the bunch for me. Fun for maybe a few minutes, but not something I could see myself spending hours on. Thankfully, though, there is tons more to play in the VR Plaza, with over 60 games to try out. They're all a bit silly, but still fun, and there's a good variety to play with. From causing chaos in the kitchen, to smashing race cars, to navigating Apple transportation in a UFO. There's a lot to be done. And it doesn't end there. If you're feeling crafty in a coding way, the Toy-Con Garage returns to let you build your own Toy-Cons and games. The new addition, though, is the Toy-Con Garage VR, in which you can make your own VR experiences. The system has been greatly expanded upon to take on the challenge of coding a VR game, with more inputs, outputs, and a more in-depth editing system. I just wish there were more tutorials to help me get the hang of it, because I'll be the first to admit, I was winging a lot of it. But I think that's the fun of creating something, right? It's just taking that leap of faith and seeing where you end up. 
Like the Toycon Garage, I think players with a knack for coding or who are looking to get into it will have a blast navigating the finer points, and I'm really stoked they'll get the opportunity to experiment here. It's especially cool because all the projects in the VR Plaza were made within the garage, so you can take a look at the end result and get inspiration for your own works. Last but not least, we should also mention Nintendo are rolling out updates for existing games to make them compatible with the VR. Super Mario Odyssey is one such title. I had a lot of fun with this one. From a fixed camera point, you can watch Mario running around, collecting musical instruments, and getting up close and personal. It's not a game changer, but it's a nice novelty experience, which leads me to the big question. What do we think of the Labo VR kit overall? I'm excited to see where Nintendo go with their VR. While it's not perfect, I think GTS peeps who enjoy building and coding and getting involved in virtual reality will get a kick out of this kit. I'm giving it four out of five rubber chickens. I think I would have liked more of a payoff to justify all the time I spent building the attachments. Aside from the blaster and maybe the bird, I wasn't jumping to replay anything, which felt like a bit of a waste. But like you said, Brad, I do admire Nintendo for trying new things, and I'm keen to see where they and other creators can take it in the future. So I'm giving Labo VR three out of five rubber chickens. We've also got to remember it's not a top-of-the-line VR rig, and it's not trying to be. Visual bugs and arm strain aside, I had fun, so it's a three and a half out of five rubber chickens for me.